What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In today's video, I'm going to be answering some of the common questions I'm getting on the audio to MIDI chord events inside of Cubase 12. So let's get right to it. Alright, so let's go ahead and set up the session. I'm going to use one of my scores, which I used in the previous video for copyright purposes. And if you haven't checked that video out, I'm going to go ahead and link that in the top right corner of this video. And I'm going to go ahead and upload this now into Cubase. And now I'm going to create a chord track. What makes this very simple is that we just drag the audio into the chord track and then the chord track analyzes the track and then gives you some chords for that track. So I'm going to go ahead and put this up here and it only takes a few seconds for it to read and here we have our chord for this track now this track was used in our previous video so this should be somewhat familiar if you have seen it so I'm going to go and open an instrument track and just put an instance of keyscape which is right here and I'm just going to load up a piano sound now what this piano sound is going to do is just going to play the chords up here so that we can hear it so where it says use monitor tracks I'm going to go and put Keyscape 1 as my source. So now I'm going to mute this track and I'm just going to go and play these chords that it had uploaded from the last dance score. Now let me play the actual score so that we can hear the chords and to see how similar these chords are. So we see that Cubase has done a good job at figuring out what these chords are just by analyzing the audio. And the way we know that it analyzed it from the audio is we see this little waveform on the top right corner of these chords. So the first question I'm going to answer is how you export these chords into a MIDI file. So you can't really do it from the MIDI file itself. And if you highlight all of these chords and go to file and do export and then do a MIDI file, it's going to be a blank file. So the way we do this is we actually highlight all of these chords and you need to have a MIDI track handy or an instrument track handy. So for example, I have this Keyscape track. So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this track. And then this is going to be called my MIDI track or my piano MIDI track. So I'm just going to wait till it loads and duplicates this track. And now I'm going to call this MIDI piano. And all we're going to do is we're going to highlight all of these and we're going to click and drag into this new MIDI piano. So notice how here we have all of the chords separated into regions. And now all we need to do is just highlight all of them. You're going to get the glue tool and then you're going to put them all together. And then you can rename this file the track name, which is MIDI piano. And now from here, we can export this file using the export events which is in the file, export, and then selected events. Of course, we need to make sure that it's not muted. So we go here, then do file, and then selected events here. If you don't know how to use the export event function, I made a video on that, so I'm going to link that in the top right corner of this video. But here you can now export this as a MIDI file, as an audio file, as a regular bounce, or just this event and then you could take this and import it to any project. So the other thing that I've been getting questions on is how do we get chords with slashes on it? So when we did the first test, we saw that it did not get a slash chord in here. And for example, in this score, this B flat actually has a B flat over D. So the way we do that is we double click on the chord and then this editor is going to pop up. Then all we need to do is just choose the note we want to be in the bass. So for example, this chord in the score has a D in the bass so it's b flat over d then it goes to c minor and all these b flat chords actually have d's in the bass and i'm sure with future updates this audio to midi chord editor is going to 
be a little bit more intuitive in figuring out inversions of these chords, which is how you get these slash chords. But for the most part, it is a B flat chord. It just didn't put the right note in the bass. So now if we take a listen to the MIDI piano here, just to make sure that we have the right chords and the right chords were placed inside of here. So this is the move we did from the chord track into the piano track here in the bottom. And again, all I did was highlight and then drag it into the region there. So I'm just gonna undo it so it can go back into its place. So let's see if the chords that we grabbed from the chord track into this region here is the chords that was inside of the score. Perfect, so since I switched this to a slash chord, I'm gonna go and remove this actually, and then re-upload it. And just let's see if it picks up on the slash chord as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this right back into here. And then I'm gonna do a select all here and glue it all together. Now let's go in and let's see if it put it as the slash chord. Cause again, the reason it's a slash chord is because in the movement of the chord, I want this stepwise motion for good voice leading. So if you listen to the chords now, Now it starts to really sound like the actual score here. And I just needed to go in and fix that. But for the most part, the chord track is pretty accurate in the analysis and it really helps you speed up the process of any transcriptions that you need to do or if you want to figure out what chords a song has. So this was the brief update on the chord track. I hope this helped. If you have any questions, just go ahead and drop your comments down below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the ring button so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. Also, don't forget to check out the John Moon Studio website. I have a brand new course that will teach you how to use Cubase from the ground up, all of the technical aspects, and it'll take you from a beginner user of Cubase all the way up to an advanced user. I'm gonna go ahead and link that down below in the description. As always, don't forget to share with your musician friends. I will see you guys soon.